Angela, when I come into a revelation like this, in order for me to minister the revelation, I've got to put this aside. But if you're a mature believer, you will hear this, this, and this. So if you've just joined us like the Lugos, I mean, you guys have been following our ministry for a long time, right? I'm a word man. Not a Marlboro man, a Paul Mall. Uh -oh. I'm a word man. Mm -hmm. I eat the word, I live the word, I sleep the word. But, in order for me to bring you bridge over Barnaba, I can't use the word because Barnaba has been pulled out of the word. In the oldest Greek manuscripts we learned last week, Barnaba was where? In the word. Remember? But the Constantinian virus set in to the early believing community. And they pulled Barnaba out of the word. So now in order for me to teach Barnaba, I've got to teach it not as the word, because I don't have the authority to call this scripture. Although we know the early community, the early believers, did refer to this as scripture. We learned that last week. So I'm not going to take you to Isaiah, and I'm not going to take you to Yochanan, I'm not going to take you to Jeremiah, I'm not going to do that. So again, at some point in two months, three months, four months, as long as this takes, as long as it takes for me to operate, we are going to stay in the book of what? Bridge over bar -ba -ba. At some point, we will get back into the Word. But the whole point, and that's why you don't want to miss meeting. The whole point is what you learned last week is that Barnaba was in the oldest Greek manuscripts of the Brit Chadashah. And they've been taken out of the Word. Remember we learned that last week? So anyway, now that I've gotten my apology and introduction out of the way and the best way to follow this is and by the way well don't forget that the best way <laughs> the best way to follow this is to get a copy of it okay now you faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word right yeah. Roman Romeo 10 17 but it's best to get a copy of it so you can check out everything that I'm sharing here some of you had an opportunity on Rosh Chodesh to get your copy and you missed it you never come to synagogue without a checkbook. You never come to synagogue without cash. Except on Shabbat, because you can't buy and sell on Shabbat anyway. But any other time you come to shul, that's your chance to get the supplies that you need when you come to shul on the other day, other than Shabbat. Amen? How many are with me? Barnabah, chapter 4. How many have a copy of Barnabah? Twelve. Oh, maybe you can share it with your neighbor, which might mean you actually might have to get closer to somebody. Yeah. Huh? Barnaba, chapter 4, verse 1. It behooves us, therefore, that we searching much concerning the things that are at hand. Part 2, bridge over Barnaba, the Hebrew name for Barnabas. That we seeking the things that are at hand should seek out the things that are able to save us. So we as Nazarene Israelites should constantly inquire into the things of Yahweh's word that are able to what? Save us. Save us not just spiritually, but save us sometimes from our own thinking, our own circumstances, people, places, and things. Biblical, the, the, the biblical definition of codependency is when we depend on anything to meet our needs other than Yahweh, our husband, our wife, our children. I'll be happy when. I would have been happy if those, whatever, fill in the blank. So we are to find our happiness in seeking out the things of Yahweh, things that are able to save us. And how many know we, are, we need salvation all the time? Not just Man. eternal life and the forgiveness of sin. Man. We need salvation sometimes from our own thinking from our own selves from our sometimes we are our own worst enemy Amen. if there's anything in your life that you trust more than Yahweh yourself your wife your, your job your career you have a biblical problem 
with codependency. You, are, you meet the biblical definition of being codependent on something other than on Yahweh. To that about Yahweh. I said to that about Yahweh. Let us flee, therefore, Barnaba 4 1, utterly from all the work of unrighteousness. And let us hate the error of the time that now is. I love that. Listen to those words. Let us hate the error of the time that now is, that we may be loved in the age which is to come. Do you see how Barnabas, who was a Jewish Levite from the island of Cyprus, do you see how he divides time? Do you see how we are to look at time? Now, then. Now, then. This world, that world. Get saved in this world, enter that world. John Hagee is wrong. The charts are a waste of money. Hal Lindsey is wrong. All those dispensational charts that they give you on television. The age of Eden. Then the pre-Diluvian age before Noah. Then the post-Diluvian age after Noah. Then the age of kingship. Then the age of law. Oh, that Jewish law. Watch out for that Jewish law. And then after the Jewish law, the birth of the New Testament church. Glory to God. And then the church is raptured. That's the end of the age of grace. Then starts the age of the tribulation. And after the tribulation, there'll be 144,000 kosher Billy Grahams. Right? Wrong. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. They're not all Jews. And then, after the great tribulation, the millennial kingdom. And then one age ends, then the new age begins. Yahweh is so, so limited in his omniscience that he can't start a new age until he concludes a former age. That's exactly what they teach. And that's not what Yahweh teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches Yahweh stacks. Turn to your name and say stacks. stacks. Think of a, of a, a stack of buttermilk pancakes. That's how Yahweh builds his kingdom. I knew you could relate to that. That's how Yahweh builds his kingdom. He takes the covenants, he stacks them, and builds his kingdom. He doesn't negate the earlier covenant to establish the newer covenant. Are you with me? He stacks his covenants. One on top of another. One dependent on another, but one never sent to replace a prior one. Make sense? I said, make sense? Yes. Baruch Hashem. So look what Barnabas says. Barnabas, a Jewish Shulia, teaches us that we are to hate the error of the time that now is, that we may be loved by Yahweh in the age to come. So here we see the Hebrew reckoning of time. Now, then. Hate the error, love Yahweh and righteousness now, so that we will allow Yeshua to love us in the age to come. Now then. This is Barnabas. No wonder this is taken out of the Bible, guys. Because it's too Jewish. It's too Hebraic. It sees time through Hebraic lenses. Are we on, Mordechai? It sees time through Hebraic lenses. Not through dispensational nonsense. In the rubbish. By the way, how many hate the error of replacement theology? Amen. It says to hate the error of the day. You know what the replacement theology says? In order to build a New Testament Gentile church, God had to renege temporarily on his covenant with the Jews. And then once the so-called church, which is the new Israel, is raptured, then God will turn his attention back to the Jews. That is replacement theology. But don't get angry at replacement theology. Replacement theology cannot live without the oxygen of dispensationalism. You've got to hate the error of the age. Don't get angry at the church as the new Israel doctrine. Don't get angry at that. The church is part of Israel, but they're not sent by Yahweh to replace the Jews as Israel, the so-called church. 
You want to get angry? You want to hate the error of the age according to Barnabas chapter 4 verse 1? Then cut off the oxygen of dispensationalism. Because that's how replacement theology breathes is because of dispensationalism. Does everybody understand what dispensationalism is? So if you don't, you're not saved. I'm only kidding. If you don't, you can't understand anything in the Bible. Dispensationalism means God is handicapped, or gold, their gold, whoever that is, is handicapped. He can't start a new work among men until he nullifies the prior one. And then guys like John Hagee get on TV and make millions selling books and CDs trying to show you when one age ends and a new age begins. I mean, let's be honest. Without somebody calling us to remind us to turn back our clocks, fall back, and spring forward, we don't even know how to keep track of daylight savings time. And we, mortal, mere mortal human beings, are going to figure out when Yahweh is starting a new age versus another age? How many people remember? Let me see your hand right now, brothers and sisters. How many people remember what they had for lunch on Wednesday? Can I see your hand, please? Other than Vincent. How many people remember what they had for lunch on Tuesday? How about for a snack two Mondays ago? Let me see your hand, please. How many remember what they had for a snack two Mondays ago? See my point? So if we can't remember, if we don't have any concept of time, we have no way to control time, and we're going to get on TV and tell the poor brothers and sisters in Yeshua that this is when one, one time begins and another time ends? Please! Please. And that's what Barnabas tells us in Barnabas 4 1. Let us hate the error of the time that now is, so that we may be loved in the age to come. And all, and all the other things that go with it. We hate all the other things that go with this age. All the other sins of the age. Do I need to name them? No. It's a waste of time. We know it all the sins of this age. Verse 2. Let us not give liberty to our soul that it should leave to run with sinners and with evil men. Neither let us be made like them. Why? Because Yeshua recreated us after the image of him who, had, who was the firstborn among many brethren. We are remade and recreated in the image of Yeshua and as believers in Yeshua and His constitution, His Torah, we are not to allow the spirit of the age and the evil sinners amongst us to mold them into their image. Let me make you a Bible scholar overnight. How many would like to become a Bible scholar overnight? Other than Mr. Luca. Bible scholar Ready? When the world goes this way, you go that way, you're in the spirit. When the world goes that way, you go that way, opposite the world. Because we are in the world, but we're not of the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, it is of the world. You're a Bible scholar, guy. Okay? They go one way, you go the other. Now you're in the spirit. Don't even need to know the Bible. Of course, knowing the Bible helps. Helps you go that way. Neither let us be like them. Let us be like who? And don't even be like their Jesus. <laughs> because, because when they can't get you to be like them, heathenism and, pa and paganism, then they want you to be like their Jesus. Yahweh says, don't be my, like my Jesus. I don't have a Jesus. I have a Yeshua. Be Yash, like Yeshua, the firstborn in Israel. For it says in Psalm 22 about Yeshua, I will declare your name to my brethren in the midst of the great congregation. I will praise thee, somebody. I said somebody. Anybody. Look at verse 3, Barnabas 4, 3. Number one, reckon time like a Hebrew. Number two, separate yourself from the world, including the Babylonian religious systems of the world, the ultimate manifestation of which is Islam. 
And I saw this to our congregation in Fort Myers last night. I said the same thing. Any name of, of, of any deity, I don't care if it's Adonai, Elohim, Buddha, Confucius, Krishna, Harry Potter, I don't care who the deity is, that replaces Yahweh's name as the only true Elohim is a name of blasphemy. Read Revelation 13. The end time beast comes up, the spirit of Babylon, Nimrod, reincarnated in modern day Islam and every other ism of this world. Every name that is not Yahweh is the names of blasphemy. Amen. And it all comes from Babylon, Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, all part of ancient Babylon. We separated into nations. But it's all part of the spirit of all these names of blasphemy. Verse 3. Barnabas 4 3. The tribulation being made perfect is at hand. Listen to me. The early believers believed that the tribulation was in their lifetime. How much more in our lifetime? I want you to understand, I'm not reading you the writings of Pope Ludwig. Okay. This is not Pope Ludwig von Beethoven V. This is Barnabas, who had a fight with Paul, and he sinned against Christianity. That was his sin. No one fights against their deity, Paul. No one questions Paul. No one argues with Paul. No one debates with Paul, because Paul is the voice of God. And that's why he got kicked out of the Bible. Not to mention it's too Jewish. We got to be careful, especially my Christian brothers. Have to be very careful that they don't do to Paul what Islam has done to Muhammad. What has Islam done to Muhammad? He's greater than Allah. I'll prove it to you. I can go to Pakistan today and call Allah a fat goat. A liar, an adulterer, and a weirdo. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum. But if I open my mouth against the Islamic prophet Muhammad, went <laughs> up. Now let me get this right, my my Muslim brother. Allah is the deity. Muhammad is the servant. And yet, I can say something against Allah and live and speak against Muhammad and die. What's wrong with this picture? Be careful, my Christian brothers, lest you make Paul into Muhammad. I'll just move on right now. <laughs> I think I'll move on. It's getting quiet. I, see, I don't really care if you're shouting. I can get you shouting in two minutes. Ready? In the beginning was the word. Ha! Huh! And the word! I'm not interested in making you shout. You want to shout? There are plenty of places you can shout. I want to teach you what they took out of the Bible. Amen. Yes, sir. And I know how to dance and shape to make everyone just get on their feet and yell. But I'm not going to do it. Because I want to show you what they took out of the Bible. Look at verse 3. The tribulation being made perfect is at hand. What is Barnabas talking about? The tribulation is a time to make Israel perfect in submission, trust, and dependence upon the Heavenly Father. It's not a time to be feared. It's a time to realize that you will be purified as gold, as silver in the refiner's fire. I don't fear the great tribulation. You know why? Because that's when you and I are going to be closest to our Father. The world's going to be freaking out about the economy, buying, selling, oil, no oil, no cooking, no heating, blah, 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 blah. And you and I are just going to be tiptoeing through the tulips with our Yahweh, with Him and tiptoeing through. Because it doesn't affect us. The wicked one doesn't touch us. That's what the word of Yahweh says. The wicked one doesn't touch us. So the great tribulation is a time to be made perfect in Yahweh. Either through martyrdom or through overcoming. Look at verse 3. The tribulation being made perfect is at hand concerning which that which is written. As Enoch said. Now people ask me all the time, what is one of the FAQs? What is FAQ? 
Hmm? Forgot your IQ, right? Wrong. What does FAQ stand for? Frequently asked questions. Rabbi, yo tiene una pregunta. Do you believe the book of Enoch is inspired? Do you believe the book of Enoch is like the book of Barnabas, that it should be in the Bible? Ready? Niet. Yes. Niet. No. 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 I do know that Sefer Yashar, or the book of Jasher, is basically Genesis with a few extra details. That, that's pretty close to scripture. And it's mentioned three times in scripture. I do know that Enoch is mentioned by Yehuda, Jew, and by Barnaba, so I know Enoch is reliable when they're quoted by a Nazarene Israelite father. I don't know that that book is authentic. You understand the difference? I don't know, as a scholar, I love these humble pastors. Don't you love these guys? They get in front of their congregation in their jeans and their cutoffs and their denims every Sunday, show their hairy legs, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, brother, I'm not a scholar, but the way I see the... Well, wait, wait, well let me check this out. Let, let me get this right. If you're not a scholar, then what the heck am I doing listening to you? They think they're being humble. They're just showing ignorance. Read my lips. I am a scholar. That's how. That's part of what I do. Oh, pride, Harry. I buy that arrogant spirit. No, don't buy it. Just put the comb down and, and bind your hair first. you might show yourself up to I'm a scholar. If I wasn't, what am I doing here? You're a scholar. You will be there in your ministry. Study. To show yourself approved unto Yahweh, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Scholar, scholarly. The tribulation is at hand. Even as Enoch said. Now, Jude says, Enoch said. Barnabas said, Enoch said. Therefore, Enoch is a prophet. However, what is in the book of Enoch is so screwed up that it can't possibly be the word of Yahweh. Because it talks about the sun dancing and putting on clothes and coming into the eastern chamber of the western chamber and marriage to the southern chamber. You think you, you think you have a problem reading Hebrew? Try understanding the book of Enoch. Nobody does. I've got some serious problems. And it contradicts the Torah, by the way. The book of Enoch contradicts the Torah in many cases, but that does not negate the fact that Enoch was not a prophet. He was a prophet. But you, his words must bear the testimony of two or three other credible Nazarene Israelites. Can I get a witness? Amen. I said, can I get a witness? Amen. So watch this. Yehuda is one. Barnabas is the second. He said, as Enoch has said, verse 3, for to this purpose, notice, Yahweh has cut short the times and the days that his beloved might make haste and come into his inheritance. What did Enoch say? Even though the great tribulation is a time to make us perfect, in our reliance and dependence upon Yahweh. Like Yahweh said through Enoch, that Yahweh will cut short the time of the great tribulation so that his beloved, who is his beloved? Yeah. Born again, renewed covenant, Yisrael, you and I, might make haste to come up to his inheritance when Yeshua comes down to be with us Leolam Bayed. So the Great Tribulation is coming, but not like the world, they, they fear the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation is coming to perfect those things in our Emunah which are lacking so that with the faster, the, 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 the quicker the Great Tribulation is cut short, the quicker we will be with our Yeshua. 
Can we find that? I think so. In Matthew 24, can we verify what Enoch said? That's when I believe what Enoch said. Because I could find it in Matthew 24. The stuff that's on the internet that Enoch purportedly said, I can't... I, I, I mean, to the best of my guess, someone went into the spaceship that landed in Roswell, New Mexico, pulled out the Book of Enoch, and put it on the internet. Because if you can understand that, my, my sister, 